A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today I would like to present to you... Oh, hello, ghost, blackboard. This is not what I wanted to present to you, but it's always nice and improvised when this happens. Never mind. I would like to present to you a nice geometric construction today. We're not going to construct it with straight edge and compass today here, maybe in a different video. And the most surprising fact about this construction is actually that it's constructible. At least in my opinion, it should be constructible. But other than that, you probably have seen what it looks like in the thumbnail. And we want to find out what the side length of the bigger square is today. Okay, let us go through the construction and then let's talk about the main question which is at hand. And it's a fairly interesting construction if you ask me. And the question is not too hard to be honest, but it's cool. Um, other than that, video is sponsored by the nice people from Bellroy. Stay tuned up until the end of the video for more information about that. Now what we are going to do at first is we are going to construct ourselves a unit side length. Unit means uh, for, for example one centimeter, okay? Really doesn't matter. We are going to just call it a unit. Now this right here is a unit side length. Let's say it has side length of one. Now we are going to complete this thing to a square. Now we are going to put in 90 degree angles the same side length here yet again. They all have have a side length of one. Now what we are going to do next is roughly we are going to take the side length, we are going to extend it by about half of the side length, by about half of the unit side length and we are going to do the same thing here. And now next thing what we are going to do is we are going to complete this whole thing to a square. We have this side length now and this side length which is the same Now we are going to complete this whole thing to a square yet again. Now we already came pretty far here. What we are going to do next is we are going to take this unit side length and we are going to put it at the very end of the square once again. And we are basically just going to extend this line by unit side length you could say. So this right here is going to be the unit side length. Let's put it like this. Next up what we are going to do is we are going to take this side length that we now got here. Okay, please note that this side length that we got from here to there is the same as the side length that we got from here to there. We are now going to put this side length on the other four parts making a square out of it yet again. Meaning we are going to extend this side length right here from the unit square by this side length. Okay, that's the next one. Now right here we also got a square going. And now here comes the most important part about this construction. What we are going to do now is we are going to connect this point, this point and this point by a straight line. They are actually going to be collinear by this construction. Okay, if you did it correctly. Connecting these by a straight line and now connecting this point with this point with this vertex we can actually make a right triangle out of this one right here. Okay and this right here is a fairly interesting construction if you ask me and it's constructible using straight edge and compass. Now what could the question at hand actually be this time? Well the question at hand is how long is this side length right here? I was being very approximate here. What I said is we are going to take this unit side length and we are going to extend it by half of it. Okay, we are going to expand it a bit more, roughly half of it. But what is this side length actually going to be? And I actually put the sketch once again here, a tiny little bit bigger in case I fuck this one up. But it actually turned out quite nicely and now we can go ahead and get started. Now what we are going to do is, or at least the way I went about solving this problem is, I was taking a look at the extension that we got right here. If we were to find out about how long we have extended the unit square side lengths, then we would be able to find out what the total side length is going to be. Now let us call this extension, let's say, um, wow. okay? Now what we did before is we were extending the unit square side lengths by wah. Okay. Now, here comes the fun part. What we did here is in the construction we extended this line segment right here, which is going to be our x, by unit side length down here, which was equal to 1. And now the problem basically collapses very nicely. There are many ways to go about solving this right here. I did it using analytic geometry, which is overkill once again, but the easiest way is to go about using um, similar triangles. Now, the cool thing is, all of these three points were collinear. And in the process, since they are right triangles, okay, we can see that these two triangles, this one right here and also this right triangle, 
are actually going to be similar. When are two triangles similar to one another? If and only if their interior angles are the same. Meaning, we got two right angles here. Okay, this is nice. With two right angles, we are actually already pretty good to go. We got two right triangles. Now what we need to show is that this angle right here is the same as this angle and that this angle right here is the same as this angle. Let us start off with the smaller triangle. Let's say this right here is alpha. And we are going to say that this angle in here is going to be beta. Now, what we can notice is that since we got a unit square in here, this right here is once again a right angle. Now, cool thing is, we know that the interior angles of a triangle added together are the same as the total angle which goes over a straight line. Now what we got here, interior angles, 180 degrees, is comprised of beta plus alpha plus a right angle. Now, this line segment right here also spans out 180 degrees. But this 180 degrees is going to be comprised of beta plus 90 degrees plus, what could this angle be? Well, obviously alpha yet again. This is just solving a regular equation. And now we got the same triangle here, obviously, because alpha plus beta plus 90 degrees make up 180 degrees once again. And this is how you can show that these two triangles are indeed similar. Now, the cool thing about similar triangles is the fact that their ratios of the side lengths it's always the same, obviously. If this ratio right here is, for example, 2 to 1, then this one is also going to be 2 to 1 yet again, obviously, because if this right here is 2 centimeters and 1 centimeter, then if we were to double the side length, it's just basically um, ex expanding a fraction, you could say, okay? Just like in here. Now what we are going to do next is we are going to compare these ratios. Now what we are going to do is we are going to compare the ratio of y over 1 for example with the ratio of, okay, same side length, basically 1 divided by, hmm, what is this side length? This side length is the same as y plus 1, okay, divided by y plus 1. Now we can go ahead and get started with solving our equation that we got right here for y, obviously. Now what we are going to do is we are going to multiply both sides by y plus 1 because it's not equal to 0 because y is strictly positive, it's a side length, y divided by 1 is the same as y, meaning what we are going to end up with is y squared plus y is equal to 1. And this is just a quadratic equation that we can pretty easily solve. We're going to subtract one on both sides and then this equation is going to be equal to zero. And now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this quadratic. Meaning the two solutions for y are going to be, okay, our coefficient here is one, meaning we're going to get negative one half plus minus the square root of the thing that we got in the front squared, so one quarter, and negative and negative turns into positive, so plus one. Now, if you were to expand our one by four divided by four, we are going to get one quarter plus four divided by four, which is the same as five divided by four. Taking the square root of that whole thing is going to give us overall that the two solutions to y are going to be negative one plus minus the square root of five divided by two, because one over four and the square root of that is the same as one half. Okay, and the negative sign is actually on top of our um, numerator. Now, what we need to take into consideration is which solution for y is actually going to be valid. Now, we just need to take a look at the branches that we got right here. If we were to choose the negative branch, then we are going to get negative a number minus another number is something negative divided by two is a negative number. Y in Euclidean space, since it's a positive side length, is defined to be positive. So we only need to take into consideration our positive um, branch right here. So the principal branch, you could say. Now, we are not done yet because what we are looking for is our side length x. How can we find out x? Well, by coincidence, x is the same as y plus 1 by construction. Meaning if we were to add 1 to our y, this right here is equal to our side length x, which is the same as the square root of 5 minus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. Expanding the 1 by 2 over 2 is going to give us the square root of 5 minus 1 plus 2, which is positive 1 overall, divided by 2. Meaning our side length x is actually the same as 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. 
we should have known from the start that this thing right here is actually the golden ratio. Isn't that cool? This weird construction with two squares which is attached to each other including a unit square inside of it and a right triangle connecting collinear points turns out to give us the golden ratio as the side length of the bigger square. This is highly interesting in my opinion and I really like this construction. And in my opinion this right here is constructible, totally constructible using straight edge and compass because the golden ratio is actually constructible using straight edge and, and compass. Oh! But you can construct it if I'm not mistaken the square root of 5. And this is why I think that this up here is also constructible. And if you did enjoy this video, then I invite you to try out Bellroy today. They were the sponsors of this video and they were really glad to send me a few of their products over which are really high quality. Now, as many of you might know, I'm a sucker for backpacks. I have a lot of backpacks lying around and yeah, it's, it's actually funny because you can only wear one at a time, but I really love backpacks and I love to switch between backpacks. And when Bellroy reached out to me the first time around, um, I actually hoped that they could provide me with some kind of backpack and I was actually in luck because I got myself this 24 liter backpack and I'm using it each and every day for the past two months by now and it's, it's just amazing. So much stuff can fit into here and this is not the only product they have. They are a little company that started out in 2010, it's an Australian company with the goal of just reinventing the wallet overall. You know what a wallet regularly looks like, you have a lot of shit lying around like receipts in there, a lot of just change that you really don't need, I mean paper money is way better than that and just using cards at the moment is a way better alternative. But fitting cards in there really doesn't get rid of the problem of a thick wallet which can leave a bulge in your pants. And this is why they came up with their Apex wallet a while back, okay, 2010, and they actually reinvented it once again. And you can open it up using just press of the fingers and it can fit up to six cards in here. This is just one of their products. They are not only selling uh, wallets as I mentioned before. They are also selling stuff like backpacks and it makes a good combination if you include the tech kit in here. I also have a lot of tech lying around which I need to move from point A to point B and this tech kit actually does a really good job at that. Keeping all of my styluses and the like in here and my spare mouse that I use at school and the like. And all of their products are made very environmentally friendly, which I really like about it. Just as an example, over the years since they used dry tanned leather, they have saved about 50 million liters of water, which, which is quite a lot, okay, this is more than one person could drink in a lifetime's worth. Or for example, they are recycling tons upon tons of used bottles for their products in, 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 in terms of polyester, reusing them, which is a good cause. I really like when stuff um, other companies sell is environmentally friendly and they really do a good job at that. And if you are interested in also getting yourself, for example, the tech kit, the Apex leather sleeve wallet or maybe this backpack, <laughs> I just love backpacks, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you are going to get 10% of your whole order. Really doesn't matter what you choose from the store, be it a wallet, tech kit or anything else, you are going to get 10% of your order. Which is a pretty great deal if you ask me. And their stuff is actually pretty affordable for the kind of quality they deliver to you. And I can really tell you that this is good quality. They got nice little details going on here which I really enjoy like like this stitch on um, Bayroy logo for example or um, <laughs> this little owl that's um, basically on each and every product which I really like. I also got one on my backpack. This is a nice little um, addition to their product. So yeah check it out if you want to support the channel this would really mean a lot to me. And other than that um, I hope you did enjoy this video. Don't forget to also check out stemmerge.eu for handcrafted products. Okay I'm also doing handcrafted stuff and the like. A little bit of crafty things. And up until the next video I wish you guys a flammable day. Please stay safe. Ciao!